Sweden, through its defense giant Saab, has been at the forefront of advancing precision-guided munitions, particularly with the ground-launched small-diameter bomb, the GLSDB. Developed in collaboration with Boeing, the GLSDB represents a significant leap in ground-based long-range strike capabilities, blending affordability, precision, and versatility. As of July 2025, the program has reached critical milestones, including initial mass production and combat deployment in Ukraine, while addressing challenges posed by modern electronic warfare. The GLSDB program began in 2013 as a joint venture between Saab and Boeing, initially without a formal sponsor, funded internally by both companies to meet the growing demand for cost-effective, long-range precision munitions. By August 2014, the two companies formalized their partnership with a teaming agreement to integrate Boeing's GBU-39B small-diameter bomb, a 250-pound precision-guided glide bomb, with the M26 rocket motor, enabling launches from ground-based platforms like the M270 multiple launch rocket system and M142 HIMARS. The GLSDB's design leverages existing stockpiles of M26 rockets, originally slated for destruction due to cluster munition bans, transforming them into a modern, precision-guided weapon with a range of up to 150 kilometers, nearly double that of standard guided multiple launch rocket system rounds. This extended range, combined with a 1-meter accuracy, allows the GLSDB to engage targets from various angles, including reverse slope engagements, making it ideal for complex battlefield environments. The development timeline reflects steady progress. In February 2015, Saab and Boeing conducted successful live-fire tests in Vidsel, Sweden, demonstrating the GLSDB's ability to strike targets at ranges exceeding 150 kilometers with pinpoint accuracy. By September 2015, the system was showcased at the DSEI Defense Exhibition in London, garnering international interest. A significant milestone came in 2017, when a test proved the GLSDB's capability to hit a moving target at 100 kilometers using a semi-active laser seeker, expanding its utility against dynamic threats. In October 2018, a long-range test at Norway's Andoya Test Center saw the GLSDB strike a sea target 130 kilometers away using an autonomous launcher, highlighting its versatility. By November 2021, Saab strengthened the program through Memoranda of Understanding with NAMO, a Norwegian-Finnish company supplying rocket motors, and Nordic Shelter, which developed a modular launcher disguised as a 20-foot shipping container to enhance deception and survivability. These partnerships underscored the collaborative, multinational effort behind the GLSDB. The GLSDB's technical specifications make it a standout in modern warfare. Its 35-pound multi-purpose warhead, derived from the GBU-39B, is capable of penetrating reinforced structures or detonating at a predetermined height, minimizing collateral damage while maximizing lethality. The weapon uses an inertial navigation system paired with GPS, incorporating a selective availability anti-spoofing module and anti-jam capabilities to ensure reliability in contested environments. Its compatibility with existing launch platforms like the M270 and HIMARS reduces logistical burdens, while the bespoke containerized launcher offers additional deployment flexibility. Priced at approximately $40,000 per unit, significantly less than the $100,000 GMLRS, the GLSDB provides a cost-effective solution for militaries seeking precision without breaking budgets. In 2023, the GLSDB entered initial mass production, marking a turning point in its journey from prototype to operational weapon. The following year, 2024, saw its first combat deployment in Ukraine, where it was supplied as part of a U.S. aid package announced in February 2023. Deliveries began in early 2024, with confirmed use by February 14, when Russian media reported GLSDB wreckage near Krimina, Luhansk Oblast. On March 26, 2024, Ukraine employed a GLSDB to strike a house in Chernyanka, Kherson, 
targeting Russian UAV operators, demonstrating its operational utility. However, the weapon faced significant challenges in Ukraine due to Russia's advanced electronic warfare capabilities, particularly GPS jamming. A U.S. defense official noted in April 2024 that the GLSDB didn't work effectively, as prolonged flight times over long distances exacerbated navigation errors in GPS night environments. This led Ukraine to temporarily halt its use, prompting Saab and Boeing to prioritize upgrades to enhance the weapon's resilience. By March 2025, significant progress was made in addressing these issues. Saab and Boeing developed an enhanced GLSDB variant, focusing on improving resistance to electronic warfare. Modifications included reinforcing internal connections to withstand launch stresses and potentially hardening GPS systems to counter jamming. In the weeks leading up to March 2025, 19 upgraded GLSDBs were test-fired to validate these improvements, with a stockpile now ready in Europe for imminent delivery to Ukraine. These upgrades aim to restore the GLSDB's effectiveness, particularly as Ukraine seeks alternatives to its depleting Army tactical missile system stocks. The contrast between the GLSDB's struggles and the success of the air-launched GBU-39 BSDB in Ukraine, effective at shorter ranges of 20 to 25 kilometers, highlights the challenges of long-range, ground-launch systems in contested environments. The air-launched SDB's shorter flight time reduces exposure to jamming, a lesson informing ongoing GLSDB refinements. Looking ahead, the GLSDB program is poised for further evolution. Saab and Boeing are exploring advanced guidance systems to counter GPS-denied environments, potentially incorporating tri-mode seekers like those in Raytheon Stormbreaker, which uses radar, infrared, and laser guidance. Such enhancements could improve the GLSDB's performance against moving targets and in adverse conditions. The program's reliance on repurposed M26 rockets offers cost savings but may limit scalability if stocks dwindle, prompting discussions about new motor production. While the GLSDB is not yet in service with the U.S. Army, Saab anticipates interest from other nations due to its affordability and compatibility with existing systems. The weapon's combat experience in Ukraine provides valuable data for refinement, positioning it as a cornerstone of Saab's precision strike portfolio. The GLSDB's development reflects Sweden's growing influence in global defense innovation. By leveraging partnerships with Boeing, NAMO, and Nordic Shelter, Saab has created a versatile, cost-effective weapon that addresses modern battlefield demands. However, its performance in Ukraine underscores the challenges of deploying GPS-dependent munitions against sophisticated adversaries. The ongoing upgrades demonstrate Saab and Boeing's commitment to overcoming these hurdles, ensuring the GLSDB remains a viable option for militaries worldwide. As the program matures, its success will depend on balancing affordability, precision, and resilience in an era where electronic warfare increasingly shapes the battlefield.